The 17-year-old accused of murdering another 17-year-old, Trinity Bostic, is going to be tried in adult court. We have the latest in the case, including the evidence against the suspect. We break it down with investigative journalist Burton Staggs. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. So this is a follow-up to a story that we previously covered on Sidebar, and it concerns the death of 17-year-old Trinity Bostic out in Tennessee. Now, as you may recall, Trinity was reported missing on June 29, 2024, out in Macon County, but it was only five days later when her remains were found in Hendersonville by a transportation worker, and it was determined that Trinity was shot to death. She actually had to be ID'd through dental records. And police, they end up arresting 17-year-old Fernando Perales Mejia, a possible ex-boyfriend of Trinity. And we're going to get into the evidence that they have against him in a minute. But he has been charged with first-degree murder in connection with Trinity's death. And we have learned that he will be tried as an adult. So let me bring in Burton Staggs. News Director, GM from Tennessee River Valley News, host of The Staggering Truth. He is such a hard worker that he is actually doing this from his car because he's coming back from an assignment. And that is what's so great about Burton. He's been so generous with his time. Burton, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Jesse. So how has this case affected the community? Clearly, it's making attention uh, across the nation. But for the community, how are people feeling about it? How are they reacting to it? Well, they're reacting with, with uh, shock, some awe. One of the major things we're hearing the most, though, out of this case is, as, as I think murders sadly have become so commonplace, but how the missing persons aspect of this was handled originally is seems to be the more the point of contention. Can you talk to us about that? Uh, when Trinity Bostic went missing, there, was, there wasn't a, a, a push by law enforcement to to um, push out that uh, they had a missing person. Uh, one could assume they just took it as a runaway and then we found out about her death as, as almost as quick as we found out about her missing. And was that a fault of law enforcement? Are they getting a lot of heat about this? I mean, why did they think initially this was a, a runaway situation? Well, they haven't exactly responded to why they thought it was a runaway, but there has been some heat. Um, on the entire process in all states i guess it's the same way you you know social media has become a big thing as far as missing persons goes but i think they get inundated with missing persons cases and they don't always treat runaways the same as they would a, a true missing persons Hey, I want to quickly thank Upside for sponsoring this episode of Sidebar. Really appreciate their support. Now, Upside is a free app that gets you cash back on daily essentials like gas and groceries. So believe it or not, I do not pump my own gas. And when I do, I can use the free Upside app. I mean, why not get cash back when you fill up your tank, right? And yes, this is actual real cash back. It's money that appears in your Upside app that you can transfer straight to your bank account. So once you have the Upside app, you claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. You pay as usual using a debit or credit card. And you follow the steps on the app and you get paid. And as you saw me just do, you can use Upside at places like Shell, Exxon, Mobile, 7-Eleven, Taco Bell. That's just to name a few, by the way. So to find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on screen and use our promo code SIDEBAR and you'll get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's promo code SIDEBAR for an extra 25 cents back on your first gallon of gas. Let me ask you about the defendant. Um, what do we know about him? What do we know about his relationship with Trinity? As you said, there's uh, some speculation that they may have had a uh, romantic or um, boyfriend, girlfriend status. And that's about all we really know. So there's no idea about a motive here. Nothing has been laid out by law enforcement at this point. There, there has been no motive laid out. Now, as talk, to me, talk to me about the evidence that they have against this guy. Uh, and because I think it's pretty staggering at this point. If you tell me from from my point of view, looking at it, it seems to be a lot. But tell our viewers and our listeners what they seem to have against Mr. Mejia. Uh, the paperwork and statements say that uh, Mejia and Bostic spoke or were together on the day of her disappearance for approximately eight hours. Uh, after he was named a suspect, uh, a search warrant was obtained for his vehicle and his residence, I believe, and they believe they have found the murder weapon in one of those two locations. Yeah, let, let's expand upon that because my understanding is they looked at the phone data, right? The, then the phone data 
shows yes. that um, yeah, this were. guy was with Trinity the day she disappeared, and their phones allegedly indicate they were together at around 2.30 p.m., right? And then it travels the same path until, I think, 10.40 p.m. that night, and his phone data links to the dump site where Trinity's body was found, and then the records show that the last number that, co that uh, contacted Trinity's phone was a number associated with Mejia. And as you mentioned, the car, Mejia's car, was captured, uh, was captured on license plate readers in Hendersonville. And they also found this yes. gun in her belongings and a black bag at his home. And they apparently found a gun and ammunition in his car that allegedly matched the ballistics at the scene. One spent casing, one live round. Um, and I find that really, but it wasn't just the, that evidence, right? Didn't he make statements as well that were problematic? Yeah, there were there were there were some statements inside the uh, in, inside the interview that were definitely problematic with that. And by the way, it wasn't just this evidence. There was a lot more because apparently he initially told police he hadn't seen Trinity in two years, but then allegedly conceded he was with her the day she went missing. Apparently, they showed him some of this evidence that you and I just talked about. Uh, but he never admitted yes. that he murdered her. He didn't admit to the murder. So it's a collection of bad evidence, right, Burton? Yeah, it's a collection of, of evidence that, that, that and like you said, he, he says he hasn't seen her in two years. The data shows their phones were together. They traveled together, but he denies murdering her, but he has the murder weapon. What, what do we know about the decision to try him in adult court? District Attorney Ray Whitley uh, charged him as an adult with first-degree murder. They went through the process in Tennessee of, of, of a juvenile transfer to adult court. That was uh, that was granted. He's now going to be charged as an adult. Um, looks like he's going to go to the grand jury in late September, and an arraignment date has already been set for September 27th. Mm -hmm. And I think his bond is set at uh, two million dollars as his, well. Right? His bond is set at two million. Mm -hmm. It's pretty significant. And uh, they, uh, through his attorney, they waived any bond hearing. Okay. Okay. Um, now, what do we know about Trinity? Because I want to take it back to the victim in this case. Uh, what have, uh, what has the community been saying about it? Where her friends and family have been saying about it? What do we know about Trinity Bostic? You, you know, outside of some some really good social media tributes, there hasn't been a lot. Just that she was a, a happy-go-lucky uh, student at Macon County High School. There has, there's not been a tremendous amount from what I've seen of, of that. Yeah, I think in her uh, uh, obituary, um, they kind of, they remember, like you said, she was kind, she was caring, uh, energetic. Um, she worked at Walmart, my understanding was. She loved music. She loved fashion. Um, she often helped her father out at his auto garage because the, they would work on cars mm -hmm. together. And her friend, uh, Chloe Redfield, told WZTV that she just had a lot of energy and that she would always be laughing and on the phone and on FaceTime. And she had... So she said that she said that she had the most amazing laugh you could ever imagine. Uh, and by the way, a GoFundMe page was set up for Trinity's family by her graduating class at Macon County High School. We're going to put it up there uh, if you'd like to support it as well. Um, but really, Burton, I, I think it seems like this is having a very big effect on the community. And whenever you have a case like this and that progresses to trial, that may be not easy for the community to process what's happening. It definitely won't be easy. And 17 year old, very happy, very energetic student, um, killed in such a a terrible way. And like you said, it has had a tremendous effect on that local community. By the way, before we go, uh, there's been a lot of questions in this case about the death penalty, and and uh, a lot of people think it should be used, but in Tennessee the suspect, the defendant, can't be charged or can't face the death penalty because he was a juvenile at the time of the offense. No matter if it moves to adult court, that can't be applied. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that um, because, unfortunately, in a lot of the stories we cover here on Sidebar, not only do we talk about heinous murders, we talk about heinous murders committed or allegedly committed by minors, and that is a question that comes up, uh, and I'm glad you clarified that for us. Uh, Burton Staggs, thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. All right, everybody. That's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us, and as always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. 
Speak to you next time.